Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for the Daily Blob, where we say, wow, more, more AI models. Are you, are, you, are, you, are you excited about these AI models? Are you, are you willing to wait in line all night just to get your hands on a new AI model? Anyways, I, I think this is interesting for two reasons. One, how boring the AI models have become after a couple of years. At this point, there are just so many models out there. And then two, along those lines, the whole question of what is the real value uh, of these LLM models at the end of the day? I talked about this a lot, uh, screaming about the stupacorns, right? We have Anthropic now valued at $183 billion. We have uh, OpenAI valued at $500 billion. We have X AI valued at somewhere between 150 to 200 billion dollars, right? So these are still private companies, right? These they're, they're not being traded on the stock exchange. This is just the value they have. And the idea being for investors is, you know, you invest money into these companies with the hope of getting the less, at least a 10x return, right? So if you invest in Anthropic at, at $183 billion, you want to see it be a $1.83 trillion company. If you invest in open AI at a $500 billion valuation, you expect it to get to be a $5 trillion company. And uh, the, the point that I just try to make with all this stuff is not that LLMs are not valuable and all that kind of thing, but are they really that valuable? And as there's more and more and more competition, I think that there becomes a, a much larger question about that. Right? How, how valuable are these quote unquote AI companies? And this becomes interesting with Microsoft. Uh, so Microsoft is now getting uh, more and more into the race. So Microsoft had invested $10 billion into open AI. And it was a weird investment. Don't get me into it. There was this whole blah about it. Anyways, Microsoft and OpenAI now are not playing as nicely together because that's what happens in the tech world every once in a while. And so Microsoft is now creating <laughs> <laughs> their own LLMs. Uh, and so, yeah, we have new two new models uh, that have come out from Microsoft. Microsoft introduces a pair of in-house AI models. It's a declaration of independence uh, from OpenAI. So previously, the concept had been that Microsoft was going to use OpenAI's models to power Microsoft's products. They got into a kerfuffle, the way things go. So now Microsoft is going off in their own direction, which again, there then becomes that whole question is what, what is the value of OpenAI, right? If, if OpenAI is powering everything, if OpenAI isn't just powering the chat GPT you pay 20 bucks a month for, but it's also paying, powering Microsoft products and it's also powering other people's products, then maybe if you squint really hard, you can see that $500 billion valuation. Uh, the, the question becomes though, is what happens when everybody wants to essentially roll their own? One of the weirdest, one of the weirdest things I see about the tech world right now is how everybody wants to be the leader in AI, right? And, and that's the thing, like OpenAI wants to be the leader. Hey, you get it. Whether or not they will do it, you get the argument. Argument. Anthropic wants to be the leader, you get the argument. Mistral wants to be the leader, you get the argument. But then you have Meta come out, right? Mark Zuckerberg is dropping tens of billions of dollars so Meta can be the leader in AI. And I've talked with Meta employees and I've talked with people who previously worked at Meta and I'm just like, what, what is the argument here, right? As a Meta employee or whatever, what, what is the story you're being told about why Meta should, should be the leader in AI. And they have no idea. They, they, li they literally have no idea why Mark Zuckerberg thinks being the leader, leader in AI will be valuable. Basically, the concept is, is because AI will be valuable, therefore they're a technology company, and so they should be the leader in AI. But right, but you have this, right? So, so Mark Zuckerberg wants to be the leader in AI, right? They have a communications platform, right? They have Instagram, they have WhatsApp, they have Facebook. These are communication platforms. Do they need AI? Yes, obviously. But do they need to be the leader? No, it doesn't even make sense, right? It's, it's not synergistic with, with, with their product portfolio. Uh, then you have, you know, then you have uh, Tim Cook. Tim Cook comes out and says Apple needs to be the leader in AI. Why? I don't know. Do they need to use AI? Do they need to implement AI into their systems to improve efficiency? Yes. But why, why, do, why do they need to be a leader in AI? 
Like, literally, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't, but but they want to be a leader too. And so that's that's the weird thing that we're getting to. Now, like I said, we have Microsoft. So Microsoft was using OpenAI's models, but now it appears that they are creating their own systems because they're, I don't know, going to be the leader in AI. Because it's the modern world of tech. If you can't, if you can't build anything that people actually want and need, then build a whole hell of a lot of buzzwordy crap, I suppose. Uh, Microsoft is expanding its AI footprint with the release of two new models that its teams uh, trained completely in-house. MAI Voice One is the uh, tech major's first natural speech generation model, while MAI One Preview is text-based and is the company's first foundation model trained end-to-end. MAI Voice One is currently being used in the Copilot daily and podcast features. Microsoft has made MAI One Preview available for public tests on LM, uh, LM Arena and we'll begin previewing it in select co-pilot situations in the coming weeks. In an interview with Semaphore, uh, Microsoft AI division uh, leader uh, Mustafa uh, Suleiman said the pair of models was developed with a focus on efficiency and cost effectiveness. I do think that this is interesting, especially if you're an investor in NVIDIA. One of the problems that I've seen with AI at this point in time is that there's no efficiency. There is no efficiency involved with so many of these systems, right? Basically, it is burn, burn as much electricity as you want to burn to make this stuff happen. And so what's curious now is we're starting to see uh, these, these AI companies uh, improve uh, the resource efficiency of using AI models and also training AI models. Google came out, I think it was like a week or two ago, and said they had decreased the electricity consumption uh, for their models by 30%, or by, by 30%. 30x, I do believe they said it was like, not 30%, 30x, not sure how much I believe that, but it is interesting now that, now that this technology is starting to mature, they're starting to look at the resource utilization a lot more, and why this becomes interesting now with training these models, uh, is let's see here, uh, so the pair of models was developed with a focus on efficiency and cost effectiveness. MAI Voice One runs on a single GPU, and MA1 uh, Preview was trained on about 15,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. For context, other models, such as XAI's Grok, took more than 100,000 of those chips for training. So so basically what they're saying here is that they were able to train their model with 15% of the GPUs that XAI was able to train their model on. Uh, and so that, that's, that's a real financial benefit, right? If each one of these GPUs is $40,000, uh, you know, needing, uh, I don't know, whatever that is, 85,000 less of them uh, is a hell of a lot less money. What's curious here, right, is they say, quote, increasingly the art and craft of training models is selecting the perfect data and not wasting any of your flops on unnecessary tokens that didn't actually teach your model very much, Suleiman said. So I think this is going to be the interesting thing too going forward with these models is the idea of focusing more and more on what the hell are you training the model on. That's one of the things uh, we had a conversation with Fireside Chat with David Cox, a VP for AI models at IBM. One of the curious things that he said with the Granite model, so IBM came out with the Granite model, they have a whole series of models, they're open source models over there, but his their, their focus was it was all trained on enterprise like level uh, communications. So the idea is they didn't want the damn thing talking about suicide, they didn't want the damn thing talking about creating chemical weapons or whatever else, and they wanted to be rather professional. So what do you do? If, if you want your model to talk about specific things and do it in a rather professional way, then literally training it using things like enterprise documentation, white papers, that type of deal is going to get you a better result uh, for the model that you're trying to create. And so their idea, right? If you're trying to use a model in business communications, it should be safer to use their particular model because of what it's actually trained on. What we saw with OpenAI and Anthropic and Mistral recently Recently, is that they just trained on everything, right? They just had their AI models attack the internet, like literally the internet, try, try to vacuum down the internet, uh, and then you get what you get out of the models. And so what's curious now is this whole idea of starting to restrict uh, what these models are actually being trained on and thinking that by restricting, you can massively save uh, resources.
Uh, although it's being used to test uh, the in-house models, Microsoft Copilot is primarily built on OpenAI's GPT Tech. The decision to build its own models, despite having sunk uh, billion-dollar investments in the newer AI company, indicates that Microsoft wants to be an independent competitor, another competitor in this space. While that could take time to reach parity with the companies that have emerged as forerunners in AI development, Sullivan told uh, Semaphore that Microsoft has, quote, an enormous five-year roadmap they were investing in quarter after quarter. So good news, good news. Yet another major tech company <laughs> is doing major investments into AI quarter after quarter. So, uh, so you know, you know, this definitely is not a bubble. So I, don't, I think it's just a curious thing, seeing more competitors getting into the AI space and then starting to think again about how, how these AI systems are architected, designed, trained, that type of deal. I've done a lot of videos lately uh, talking about things like Huawei. So Huawei um, came up with a new software to basically determine what storage should be used during certain AI processes, right? The idea is only use expensive uh, memory storage uh, for, for high value AI processes and then shunt it off to, to, to lower value storage for lower value processes. Uh, talking about uh, Alibaba coming up with their inference uh, GPUs or yeah, uh, processors. Uh, Huawei also coming up with new storage systems. And I think that's what, what's becoming interesting now with AI, again, from a, from a systems level standpoint, is thinking about how, how to architect and how to how design this stuff, right? Instead, instead of just swiping the credit card and burning billions and billions of dollars, how can you start designing things appropriately to, to try to try to get a return on investment? And we'll see, we'll see how this works. But it's also gotta be interesting, like with NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is flying high right now. NVIDIA is like a four trillion dollar company. What, what happens to NVIDIA if simply by designing systems differently, they can decrease their, their GPU requirements by 85%? Like that's, that's where I get concerned with companies like NVIDIA. They've just pumped so much money and their value is so based on this hardware. And so much of the hardware utilization is not is not what I would call sensical. So much of the hardware utilization is just because there's so much money going in. And the, the idea is just, you just burn money in order to deploy systems and then we'll worry about efficiency later. And so the question that becomes is as more and more companies start focusing on that efficiency, what, what then happens to a company like NVIDIA? And well, we will find out. So put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. What do you think about uh, Microsoft trying to get into the model race? What do you think about the stupa corns out there? Will they survive? Put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you don't, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing. Call me a dumbass. Just do it in the comment section. And with that, see y'all later.